And if you don't believe that they're aware of the potential for this election to confine Obama's chance to move on this grand bargain after the election, I've got this for you. One, I present as evidence here in my stack, is a piece from August 7th, 2012, by the New York Times. I didn't even read the whole piece. Obama is an avid reader and critic of the news. I don't know, one of these pieces. But this is a story that was clearly written to get the following paragraph out there. The news media has played a crucial role in Mr. Obama's career, helping to make him a national star not long after he had been an anonymous state legislator. As president, however, he has come to believe the news media have had a role in frustrating his ambitions to change the terms of the country's political discussions. He particularly believes that Democrats do not receive enough credit for their willingness to accept cuts in Medicare and Social Security, while Republicans oppose almost any tax increase to reduce the deficit. We know that President Obama had put cuts to Social Security and Medicare, cuts to Social Security in the form of chaining the CPI, how we calculate cost of living increases, raising the eligibility age for Medicare. We know that he had put that on the table. He was willing to accept that deal. He had basically come to terms with uh, John Bonaire for supposedly $800, million worth of $800 billion worth of tax increases that, in fact, were all based on laugh or curve math anyways. But put that aside for a moment. We know that's the case. And now we see this story come out in the New York Times, supposedly saying that Paul Ryan was the biggest roadblock to coming to terms on the grand bargain. This comes out just days afterwards. Who is pushing this, this meme? Well, of course, it's the administration. Elements in the administration who want that grand bargain after November who rather than seeing this as an opportunity to get a mandate to go forward with non-austerity policies, to go forward with policies that say we need to tax the rich, policies that say we need to protect Social Security and Medicare at all costs, they see this as an opportunity to open up the door for a grand bargain. A grand bargain that comes in the form of Erskine Bowles, of the Bowles Simpson Simpson Bowles memo. They didn't have a commission report, of course, because they couldn't get enough people to sign on to it. And Erskine Bowles is rumored to be the next Treasury Secretary. And remember now, it was President Obama who helped create the notion that Paul Ryan was the intellectual pillar of the Republican Party. He is the one who in early 2009, I believe it was, brought Paul Ryan into this national health care, maybe it was mid-2009, this national health care debate. Remember that live, televised, sort of round table debate? Paul Ryan was the guy coming in with his plan to destroy Medicare. The reason why President Obama brought in Paul Ryan, the most extreme right-wing ideologue, corporatist, not deficit hawk, fake deficit hawk, because he never cared about the deficit. He didn't care about it when he was voting off of those deficit-creating uh, plans during the Bush administration. And his plan itself does not reduce the deficit. All it does is shrink the size of government. And it offsets that shrinking size in government with, uh, with cuts to uh, shrinking the revenue base. In other words, tax cuts for millionaires. And by bringing uh, Paul Ryan into that debate, it created space and moved the center of that debate towards the right. And then President Obama appoints Alan Simpson, longtime foe of Social Security, longtime foe of Medicare, Republican, former senator, and appoints a co chair, a Clintonite Democrat corporatist who also favored the privatization 
i.e. the death of Social Security. A guy named Erskine Bowles. And if you have any question as to where Erskine Bowles, rumored to be the next Treasury Secretary, where he stands on this divide, listen to this clip of Erskine Bowles from 2011. Eight months ago, nine months ago, talking about Paul Ryan and Paul Ryan's budget plan, which is now so toxic that we already, already have over a half a dozen Republican candidates, Senate and House, running from this. Some of whom even voted for it are now saying, well, that vote was a mistake. Here's Erskine Bowles. Have any of you all met Paul Ryan? We should get him to come to the university. I'm telling you, this guy is amazing. Uh, I always thought I was okay with arithmetic. This guy can run circles around me. And he is honest, he is straightforward, he is sincere. And the budget he came forward with is just like Paul Ryan. It is a sensible, straightforward, honest, serious budget. And it cut the budget deficit just like we did by $4 trillion. The president came out with his own plan. And the president, as you remember, came out with a budget and I don't think anybody took that budget very seriously. Uh, the Senate voted against it 97 to nothing. He therefore, after a lot of pressure from folks like me, uh, he came out with a new budget framework. And in that new budget framework, he, cuts, he cut the budget deficit by $4 trillion over 12 years. And to be candid, this, this this $4 trillion cut was very heavily back-end loaded. So if you looked at it on a 10-year basis and compared apples to apples, it really was about a $2.5 trillion cut. So there you have it, Erskine Bowles singing the praises of Paul Ryan as being a legitimate, serious individual, while now every single person who has crunched the numbers on Paul Ryan's budget says it's a joke. It's a joke. So here is the opportunity that we have as progressives. This campaign, if you want to do something, you want to tweet something, must repeat over and over again that when Obama wins, it is a vote against cutting Social Security and Medicare. I don't care if that's not Obama's position. We can say it's a vote against Paul Ryan, it's a vote against Mitt Romney, and why are people voting against Paul Ryan and Mitt Romney? Because they want to maintain the integrity of our Medicare and our Social Security system. And that means no cuts, no cuts are necessary. Erskine Bowles has wanted to privatize Social Security years and years and years. You think he's now, not uncoincidentally, on the board of directors of, uh, is it Morgan Stanley? Is it Chase? I don't know who it is. The man's a banker. And we all know why bankers, investment bankers, want uh, Social Security privatized. Because guess who makes all the fees? Guess whose stock market gets propped up? So uh, this is an opportunity for progressives who have otherwise uh, not been terribly enthused between picking uh, between Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Uh, because we can now define who is Tweedledee and who is Tweedledum.